Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Check us out on Twitter at Radio Detectives and follow us on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Great Detectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net. Thank you to Shannon for supporting the program in that way. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. And thank you to Sonia for becoming our latest Patreon supporter at the Seamus level of four dollars or more per month. Again, thanks so much for your support, Sonia. All right, well now it is time to get into this week's episode of The Man Called X. Original air date is New Year's Day, January 1st, 1952, and the title is Petroleum Sabotage in Lima. <laughs> Listen to Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X, transcribed. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, adventure, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. The perpetually sunless capital of Peru was founded by Francisco Pizarro and built out of treachery and conquest and death. He named it the Ciudad de los Reyes, the city of kings. Today, the kings have departed, and we know it only as Lima, but treachery and death never depart. They are waiting now in the study of a small modern bungalow set on a low hill in the suburbs of the city. A man opens a desk drawer and searches through it hungrily. The door opens behind him, and he swings around. Who's in here? What are you... What are you doing here tonight? I didn't know you were coming by. I was going to bring you those... (laughs) The man at the desk shoves the pistol into his pocket and steps through the French windows. For a moment, the study is silent. And then a tall, red-haired girl runs into the room. Roger. What is it? What happened? I heard... Roger! Get get help. Your friend, Ken Thurston. Man, go... Go... This is the reply we got from the Lima police, Ken. Mm Mm-hmm. Inspector Morales seems perfectly satisfied that Roger Bright was shot by an ordinary prowler. I can't believe it, Chief. Betty wouldn't have telephoned me if there wasn't something more to it. Oh, now, Ken, when a woman's husband is murdered... Betty Bright isn't just any woman, Chief. You know that. Sure. She's one of the best secretaries we ever had in the Bureau. And she knows how important our work is. She wouldn't ask me to come down there if it wasn't pretty serious. Maybe not. But I don't see how this could involve us... You, officially. You met Roger Bright, uh, didn't you, Chief? Of course. At the wedding. Gave Betty away. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know his reputation. One of the best petroleum geologists in the business. Well? A couple of years ago, he found that big oil field up in Alberta. Since then, he's been working for Tropic American Oil, using Lima as a base. Yes, but we haven't any reports of South American discoveries by him. That's just it. He's been down there nearly two years. By now, he should have turned up something or come back home. Wait a minute, Ken. You don't think Bright's murder might have some connection with the new oil discovery? Could be, Chief. Oh, what you just guessing? Well, forget Betty said he told her to send for me just before he died. Oh. Well, there is oil in Peru, lots of it. Think what a new discovery it would mean right now, with all our trouble in the Near East. Yeah, it sure would change the whole picture. Right. And there are plenty of people who would like to keep news of such a find from getting out. I don't know, Ken. Every time you start adding up two and two like this, you seem to end up with five, but... Doggone it, you're usually right. The Peruvian police have any objection to my going down there? Morales wired us he'd welcome any assistance. Mm, You know, I, uh... I could postpone that Tokyo assignment for a couple of days. What do you think? All right, Ken. Just one thing, though. As far as I'm concerned, you're making this trip alone. Let's leave Zell Schmidt out of it. Oh, Chief, if you can head Pagan off, I'm all for it. All right, don't worry about it. 
I'll have Miss Brooks get you a reservation on the next plane to South America. Miss Brooks, I want a ticket for Ken Thurston on the next flight to Lima, Peru. And I don't want anyone else to find out about this. Is that clear? Sure, Mr. Chief. I'll keep it in my head. Oh, oh no. What are you doing out there, Zellschmidt? Well, Miss Brooks had to go outside for a minute, so I'm taking over for her. Uh, did you say two tickets for Lima, Mr. Chief? <laughs> I think that's the house they down there. Yeah. They're on the corner. Sure is a dirty, rotten crime, Mr. X. That Betty Bright is a real nice girl. Yeah. Well, here we are. Whoever done in her husband is no better than a, than a murderer. I'm sorry. I'm not able to see... Oh, Ken. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Hello, Betty. Oh, you remember Pagan? Hello, Pagan. Come in, both of you. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry, everything isn't such a mess, but I haven't able, been able to do much since... Sure. I understand. Oh, come, sit down. Would you like a drink or anything? I'm well, I'm sure we have something. I, I mean, I have some brandy or... Oh, Ken, I just can't get used to the idea. I can't believe that I'm alone. I know, Betty. It's only been three days. Just three days. Seems like a year. Sure. I'm not even able to make a decision anymore. I don't know if I want to stay here or if I want to go back to the States. But I've got to stay. At least until I'm sure. Until I know why Roger was murdered. I talked to Inspector Morales a little while ago. I'm afraid he didn't have much for me to go on. No. I suppose it could have been a prowler like Morales says, but... Why would a prowler steal all Roger's maps and reports? Oh? Oh? Morales didn't mention that. He doesn't know it. I didn't tell him. Well, suppose you tell me about it, then. Of course. Roger had been on a field trip in the interior. He'd been gone for nearly three months. Came back to Lima the afternoon of the... the day he was killed. Go on, Betty. It was late in the afternoon, so... so he didn't go to the office, but came straight home. He was very excited, and we went out to dinner to celebrate. Oh? Yes. He told me he'd found formations that, that indicated a tremendous oil pool. I see. After dinner, we came home. We were in the bedroom when, when Roger thought he heard a noise in the study. He went to look. Next thing I heard was gunshots. I ran into the study and... He was dying. What about these maps and reports you mentioned? They were in the desk. Roger kept all his important papers there. I didn't realize they were missing until after the police had left. And you... you did not tell Morales? No. Hmm. Wilhelm said it would be dangerous. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't know Wilhelm. Wilhelm Zuckland. He's with the Tropic American, too. I think... I think he's in charge of exploration and discovery. Did Zuckland give any reason for not mentioning these stolen records? He said that... that if Roger had been killed because of them, that... that I'd be in danger, too, if, if I told anyone I'd seen them. Maybe I was wrong to take his advice, Ken, but I couldn't think very clearly. I I wasn't making very good sense right right after afterwards. I see. I suppose this uh, Zuckland has an office of Tropic American Oil. Yes, it's, it's next to Rogers. Thanks. That sounds like a good place to start. Pagan. Yes. Suppose you stay here with Mrs. Bright. Keep her company for a while. Oh, that isn't necessary, Ken. I... I can manage alone. Sure, but this way I'll know where Pagon is if I need him. Hmm? Sit down, Mr. Thurston. Sit down. Thanks. Ah, it is unfortunate that we must meet under such tragic circumstances. Roger was an extraordinary geologist, a real genius. And he was my friend as well. Oh, it's a tragic world we live in, hmm, Mrs. Alston. Sometimes it seems that way, Herr Zuckland. Ah, 
I see my accent has betrayed me again. But you see, I am not German, Mr. Thurston. No, I am a Czech. I thought I had seen my share of the world's unpleasantness, but even here in Peru, it intrudes. You've been in South America sometime? Oh, since 1940, yeah. I escaped from Czechoslovakia when Hitler entered. I had been employed by one of their refining companies and managed to secure a position with Topic American Oil. And here I've worked ever since. I see. Once I thought my exile was ended. Now I was prepared to return to Europe. I even purchased my ticket. But before I could sail, Masaryk was murdered, his government overthrown, and my country was again imprisoned by dictatorship. So, here I remain, perhaps for the rest of my life. Who knows? Oh, I think you'll find that tyranny usually ends by destroying itself. I hope so, Mr. Thurston. I hope so. But now, you did not come to my office to discuss my affairs. Now, you want to know why Roger Bright was killed and why I advised his wife not to mention certain missing reports, no? If you can help me along those lines, I'll appreciate it. Very well. Why was he killed? Well, I am not certain. It is possible that a housebreaker became nervous, fired his pistol, and in his haste to depart took along letters, maps, and records without even knowing what they were. Or it was possible that it was not a housebreaker and that he came for the express purpose of stealing those reports. Well, what do you think? Now, I am inclined to the latter theory. That is why I advise Mrs. Bright not to mention the theft. Perhaps it was foolish advice, but then, at the time, I, too, was upset. I'm still most uncomfortable in the presence of death. And I'm very fond of Betty, uh, Mrs. Bright. Tell me, did you know Roger had found what looked like a new oil field? Uh, look at this map, Mr. Thurston. Now, here, this is the area Roger was exploring. It's a rough triangle from Camucheros to Iquitor to Tapiti. A very inaccessible region. There was no way for Roger to communicate with us while he was there. Well, that's a pretty wide area. So if Roger did find a potential oil pool, you'd have no... You'd have no way of knowing exactly where it was. Unfortunately, no. Yeah. He couldn't have made such a trip alone. Ah, oh, no, he had a party of about 30. They were natives recruited in the vicinity. And we would have no record of their names. And if we had, they could tell us nothing. There was no one from this office with him? No, no one. Uh, we don't have a large staff and... Uh... Oh, now, wait one moment. Yes. Now, what was his name? Ah, ah, let me think. I think I have it here. Yes, yes, this is it, I'm sure. Ramon Lopez. Lopez? Yes, a young student geologist from Lima. He asked permission to accompany Roger. How well did you know this, Lopez? Oh, not at all, but... Uh, but here, here. This, uh, this here is the letter he wrote us. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I should consider it a great privilege to journey with you on your field trip next month. It would pay my own expenses. I would pay my own expenses, isn't it? Hoping to hear from you, Ramon Lopez... 14 Avenida Norte, Lima, Peru. Do you mind if I take this, Oakland? Oh, sure, I welcome to it. Thanks. These field trips of Rogers weren't kept secret, I take it. Oh, I, yes, Mr. Thurston, they were. You see, the competition in the oil business is not only keen, but at the moment a matter of international importance. Yet this Lopez boy knew Roger was leaving, and when? Oh, I, oh, I, yes. I never thought of that. I have been very stupid. Or maybe Lopez was very smart. Open up, Lopez. Lopez. Hmm. Well. What do you think you're doing, senor? Sorry, I knocked, and when you didn't answer, you I... broke in. It is a Yankee custom to enter a man's apartment without his permission. We usually answer the door when someone knocks. May I remind you that you are not in the States now, senor... Uh... My name's Thurston, Ken Thurston. What do you wish? I understand you're a very promising young geologist, senor Lopez. I am only a student. I have had no practical experience. Oh, I thought you just returned from a field trip with Roger Bright. What are you talking about? It is your letter, isn't it? And if it is... The landlady downstairs says you've been away from Lima for three months. You came back on Wednesday, the same day Bright was killed. You have no authority to question me, senor. All right, then. Let's go down and see Inspector Morales. Wait. I, I will tell you anything I can. But I know nothing. 
You know where Bright went. You were with him. See. Si. And since you're a geologist, you must know where he found a potential oil field. You are wrong, Senor Thurston. Oh? Huh? We found no oil field. The trip was a failure. Senor Bright was terribly disappointed. Oh, why lie about it, Lopez? Lie? I will not be insulted in my own apartment. Get out. You're afraid to tell me the truth. Why? Did someone get to you? Or were you planted on that expedition? Carl Lopez, what are you afraid of? I am afraid of no one, senor. And if you wish to test my courage... Okay. So, I have told you to get out. Now you will go. And so you will not come back. <coughs> oh, just a minute, Lopez. You think I am a coward. If that did not convince you, perhaps... All right. You asked for it. Well, I'm looking for my friend, Mr. Thurston. It's a matter of life and death or okay, something. Okay, Pagan, who is I've it? got to find him. That Mr. Zuckland said he was maybe coming to see you. Pagan. Get off the line, Mr. X. I'm trying to... Oh, oh Mr. X. What's the trouble? Oh, it's awful. I I was right in those house when, when it happened. Well, what happened? I didn't see him myself, but, but she screamed. And then oh, it was a nightmare, Mr. X. I don't even know if I'm awake yet. Ooh, blood all over the place. For the love of Mike, what are you talking about? That Mrs. Bright... That we come down here to help out. Somebody shot her. Betty? Pagan, is she all right? I don't think so, Mr. X. The doctor says maybe... Maybe she's not going to pull through. We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. The blood plasma reserved for the fighting men in Korea is exhausted. This condition must not continue. The lives of our loved ones must not be lost needlessly. Our soldiers in Korea are giving their blood for their buddies. Can we do less? The modern assembly line is a wonderful thing, but it cannot produce blood. We must have a human assembly line, and this is our job here at home. Call your local headquarters of the American Red Cross now. Give a pint of your blood to save a life. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. In Lima, Peru, Ken Thurston learns that the murder of an American petroleum geologist was committed to prevent the locating of a potential oil field. And now an attempt on the murdered man's wife brings the man called X to her home, where he confers with Inspector Jose Morales of the Peruvian police. The doctor accompanied the ambulance, Senor Thurston. She has been taken to the Hospital de los Angeles Blancas. You got here before they left, Inspector Morales? See, si, but the Senora Bright was unconscious. I could learn nothing from her. This man was the only witness. I was about to place him under arrest. However, he insists that he is a friend of yours. Tell me the truth, Mr. Thurston. Oh, I suppose you might call him that, Inspector. Then unless the senora recovers consciousness, we are helpless. If you were right here, you must have seen something, Pagan. I wasn't there when, when it happened. I was in that study room where the other fellow was killed. What were you doing there? Well, I, I thought I might... Could find a clue or something. I heard a gunshot off, and I came running in as fast as I could. Oh, sure. But when I got there, whoever did it was gone. Ha! Ah, if I've been around when it happened, he'd, he'd never get away. I guess he waited until I was out of sight. Didn't want to take no chances. Hey, Mr. Thurston? I imagine, Inspector, it'll be several hours before anyone can question Mrs. Bright. See, si, that is what the doctor said. At least that long. The wound was a serious one, so until there are X-rays... Mm. Tell me, what do you know about a man named Lopez... Ramon Lopez. Why, only that he accompanied Senor Bright on his trip to the interior. Had he told you he was going, Inspector? Oh, no. Senor Zuckland telephoned the information to me this afternoon. He said your visitor had reminded him of the fact. He was pretty quick in getting to you, wasn't he? Well, he seemed very eager to cooperate. Uh, do you know this Ramon Lopez? I was with him when Pagan telephoned me. Oh, well, then the young man has an alibi for the time of the shooting today. Has he? See, if you were with him. His apartment is only five minutes from here. He didn't answer when I knocked. Maybe he was there, or maybe he was just coming in the back door. Ah, I see. I shall question him immediately. If you don't mind, I'd like to have a little talk with him first. Certamente, Senor Thurston. Thanks. Come on, Pagan. But, 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 Mr. Thurston, if this character is the guy who has been doing all this shooting, uh, maybe I ought to stay here in case the inspector. Huh, Mr. Thurston? Come on, Pagan. (laughs) 
Ramon Lopez. Lopez? This is his apartment, I believe. Oh, you mean the man who lived here before? Huh? He's moved. He's no longer here. Buenos noches. No, no, just, just a minute. Who are you? Nita Pacheco. Senorita Pacheco. I'm Ken Thurston. <laughs> and I am Mr. Pagan Zelsch. You'll pardon me. I was about to dress for dinner. Sorry to bother you, Senorita, but Lopez was here this afternoon. I'd like to talk to him. I've told you he's not here now. He moved away about an hour ago. I've been hoping for a front apartment. When the landlady told me I could exchange mine for this one, I did not wait. The quarters are furnished, so it's very simple to move on a moment's notice. And you, uh, you don't know where Lopez moved to? You can ask the landlady. Thanks, I will. Uh, wait. Wait, Senor Sirson. Huh? I have been very rude. You must forgive me. I was taking a nap when you knocked. My temper is not good when I'm awakened. If... You and your friend will come inside? Oh, that's very kind of you, senorita. Hey, I don't like this, Mr. Thurston. As I told you, I just move in, but perhaps I have some wine. Don't bother, Nita. Senor Zelchman? Oh, well, as long as it's handy. Of course. Are you... your friend for Senor Lopez? I've met him. I don't know him myself. Even though we've lived in the same building... You know, we've never met. It's extraordinary, no? Yeah, very, really, especially since I happened to notice your picture on his dresser when I was here before. Oh, hey, hey, don't don't let all that oh, wine so go to waste. Sorry. Here, let me help you, Nita. Oh, gracias, man. through my fingers. Sure. About that photograph. Uh, you must have been mistaken, Senor Thurston. No, I don't think so. Well, there are many girls in Peru who look like me. And who would sign the picture with love from Nita... I'm afraid I cannot offer you the wine after all. I've spilled most of it. I just remembered I have an engagement. You will forgive me? Certainly. Oh, and if your engagement happens to include Raymond, tell him Senora Bright didn't die. She's at the Hospital of the White Angels, room 313, and she'll probably recover consciousness before midnight. You're wasting your time, Senor. I have no occasion to talk with Senor Lopez. Good night. Good night, Nita. Perhaps we'll meet again. I don't think so, Senor Thurston. <laughs> She's certainly mixed up with that Lopez character, isn't she, Mr. X? Looks that way, doesn't it? And you think maybe he's the guy who killed Mr. Mr. Bright and, and tried to shoot his wife to death, eh? Could be. Just goes to show you, you can't... Wait a minute, Mr. X. You told her about Mrs. Bright not being dead and, and what room she's in. Oh, if she tells Lopez, how could you do such a thing? Maybe that was a little careless. Sure, boy, sure, boy. Boy, I wouldn't tell nobody. They, they might try to kill her again. Yes. There are probably quite a few people in Lima who'd like to find out about Betty Bright. They won't find out nothing from me. I'm shut like a clam. Good. And just to show you how much I appreciate it, I, here's 20 bucks. Huh? Go on, take it. Oh, oh, sure, sure, but what is it for? Well, you could probably get a lot more than that if you told the right person about Betty Bright's room, how she is... I couldn't? Well, I, uh, I wouldn't even consider you. You said she was in room 313? That's right. Say, I just remembered. I've got a 32nd cousin in Lima, uh, cousin Grisha. Maybe I ought to see him sometimes. No, maybe. Sure, Pagon. Take it easy. <laughs> Anybody in here? Hiya, Pagong. Mr. Thurston. Come on in. Be quiet about it. Where's Mrs. Bright? Did she regain conscience and take it on the land? Oh, no, no. She's up on the next floor. But, but this is room 313, like you said. Uh, why are the lights off? And what are we doing here? Waiting. What for? Who? It depends on how many people you told about this room number. Mr. X, how can you say such a... You still haven't told me who were you waiting for? Oh, a killer, perhaps. Oh, well, in that case, let me out of here. Quiet, you idiot. But, but... Quiet. 
Somebody's coming down the hall again. <laughs> Make no sound, Mrs. Bright, or I would... Hello, what's this? Come on in. Oh, I must have the wrong room. I was looking for my patient. You came to the right room. No, 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 no. You are mistaken. I have an important operation to perform on one of my patients. Oh, is it Dr. Zuckland now? Oh, now, look here. What oh, cut it out. That surgical mask doesn't fool anybody. Hey, you said Zuckland. And he was right, Gladysmith. Don't move, either of you. <laughs> Mr. Rex. Don't move. Oh, put that gun away, Zuckland. It's too late to do you any good now. It has been useful before, Mr. X, and it will be useful again. Now. I suppose that's the same one you used to kill Roger Bright? That's right. So, you see, I know how to use it. And what about Betty? Did you get worried about whether she might know where the new oil pool is? Is that why you took a shot at her? Tell me, how did you find out about Roger's discovery in the first place? Lopez? Of course. Lopez is a loyal member of the party. I don't have to ask you what party. You said you came over here in 1940, didn't you? So? Well, the comments have kept you standing by for a long time, haven't they? That is a perfect example of our careful preparation for whatever may lie ahead. Under the program of our great leader, we are always prepared for anything. That is where you Americans fail. Oh, I wouldn't say that. At least Inspector Morales is pretty well prepared for you tonight. What are you talking about? After sending some of his officers to pick up Lopez and his girlfriend, he was kind enough to offer a station, a few of his best men in the next room. Just, uh, just open that connecting door and you'll see what I mean. I don't believe it. No, this is a trick. Go ahead, open the door and see for yourself. I will. Yeah, you lied. This door is locked. Then it looks like I'll have to take care of you. Oh, no, you don't. Rotten shot, so come try this. I, I, I kill you for this. You can come out from under that bed now. Well, I guess we showed him a couple of things or two, didn't we? Yeah, I guess we did. Hmm. Now, how would you like to pick up that phone and ask Inspector Morales to come over? Oh. Uh-huh. Well, you bet I will. Uh-huh. You want me to have him come over and pick up this... this crook? Wait. Hey, I must... I must... Talk to you, Mr. Sarson. Hey, I thought you were out cold. Oh, put down that lamp, Pagan. No, don't. Don't send for the inspector. Listen to me. I have the reports. The maps which describe Bryce's discovery. Now, without them, you will never find that oil field again. Don't worry about that, Zuckman. We'll find it. But I can give them to you. We'll make a bargain. If you'll give me a chance to escape, and in return you will have a new oil field. Not interested. You're going to be tried for Roger Bright's murder. Of what value is the life of one man? How can you weigh that against the oil and gasoline I offer to you? Think what this discovery can mean to your Western world. How can you refuse? You don't understand, Zuckland. People like you never do. But oil and gas and machinery, all the material things in the world aren't as important as one human life. That's why you and your party will always be on trial before the decent people of the world. Okay, Pig, I'll call the inspector. And now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Lucille Meredith, Peggy Weber, Will Wright, Bill Conrad, Ben Wright, and Harry Bartell. Next week, a flying trip to, well, believe it or not, to nowhere. And if you like plot and twist and counterplot, I strongly advise you to listen, because I really think the story will keep you on the edge of your seat. Pagan, oh, sure, he'll be along in the person of Leon Belasco. So join us, won't you? When next I return, as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's transcribed story was written by Frank Burt. This program was directed by Jack Johnstone. 
All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. And so until next week, same time and station, this is Hal Gibney saying good night for The Man Called X. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. Well, this one, as an episode, had some uh, problems, uh, I think particularly towards the end. And uh, there can be a tendency among shows set during the Cold War uh, or, you know, even you go back to World War II where you're dealing with either the Soviets or the Nazis and you're wanting to paint them as this serious existential threat to freedom and they uh, are a bit foolish because it, they uh, go into an obvious trap here. I mean, Ken has tried leaking information before, but including the uh, room number in what was provided to Pagon, that was just a little too pat. And I, I think any reasonable spy would suspect that she was anywhere else in the hospital other than in that room. And then our uh, Soviet agent is defeated with the equivalent of a look over there, the police uh, trick, which is one of the oldest tricks in the book. Though I guess on the other side of the ledger, I will say for Ken, one thing I don't get is you tr uh, lay a trap some for someone. You lay in wait for them, and you catch them by surprise with your presence, but you don't bring a weapon so they end up getting the drop on you. How is that a thing? So this is not a great start to 1952, but I've listened ahead, and there are some really fun episodes. This one, I'll... It just didn't quite land for me, though it wasn't horrible, despite the issues with the ending. Listener comments and feedback now, and we have a note from Ron, who writes, I've loved listening to the podcast. I've listened to many of these as they were originally broadcast. Well, thank you so much, Ron, and uh, so glad you are listening to the program. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Jenny, Patreon supporter since February 2020, currently supporting the program at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for your support, Jenny. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, mark the notification bell. All those great things that uh, make it so that more people will be able to see and enjoy uh, what we're putting out. Next Tuesday, we're going to begin to feature previously uncirculated episodes of Mr. Chameleon. And next Wednesday, of course, we'll be back with another episode of The Man Called X. But coming up tomorrow... Uh, listen for Philo Vance, where... My name is Philo Vance. No, I'm sorry, I can't do a thing. Philo Vance? The private detective? Well, I'm really a private investigator, but the difference is so subtle, we'll skip it. I'm looking for Johnny Blake. Is that you? Nope. I'm Dick Jackman. Johnny ought to be around, though, somewhere. Where's that? Well, I don't know for sure. I just came to work. He gets in before I do. Maybe he's downstairs in the basement grabbing a smoke. Or mixing some syrups or something. What's up, Mr. Vance? I don't know. That's what I came to find out. Which way is the basement? Right down the stairs at the back of the store. Say, I'm off for a couple minutes. You want me to take you down? I'd appreciate that very much. Okay, just walk along outside the counter, Mr. Vance. Meet you in the back. Well, that's fine. Thank you again. Here we are. Right through this door. Down the stairs. Oh, I'll go first, Mr. Vance. If you will. See, we keep all kinds of stuff down here, Mr. Vance. Syrups, big refrigerators, everything. Hey, Johnny, got company. Yeah, that's funny. Maybe he isn't down here. Oh, no, he's got to be. One of the boys said he saw him go down here about an hour ago. Hey, Johnny! John! Mr. Vance? I see it. Is that 
Was that Johnny Blake? Sure looks like him from here, Mr. Lance. Hmm. I wouldn't like to go over there. I would like to look at it from up close. You won't have to, Dick. He's dead. I can tell that. I can see from the way he's crumpled up. What's that on the floor next to him? Well, that's a syrup pump. Vanilla syrup pump. We keep all of them down here in the morning where they can be scrubbed. Well, I'd say somebody hit Johnny over the head with it and killed him. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And uh, check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.